Hello everyone. Welcome to Ginger by Endos. Today we are going to see API models, page object models. So basically, page object models is a new feature of Ginger 5.1 in which we will see how the page object models works as a automation test engine. So let's get started. So our application is open now. Uh, we can see a drop down here. We have the four options open existing solution, download existing solution, create new solution. So we have an existing solution. So I click on it. I have a solution folders. Here we have four solutions. So I select a solution name YouTube. Then I click open, then open again. Now you can see we have business flow and some business flow created, run set, configurations, resources. So as today videos, we will talk about API models. So here in resources you can see application models tab. So if I click on this application model tab, I can see an option API models, page object models, and models global parameters. In today's video, we are going to cover the API models. So as you are aware of this top UI, even if you are not, then feel free because in APIs models we are going to see how we can test the API structure such as digital JSON templates, XML templates, using SOAP UI and an, another method. So in Ginger, it allows us to use digital as in testing for the API models. So for creating an API model, if I click on this plus icon, so it does, it has given us a warning that please add at least one web service platform. So I come to configuration. Here we can see target application. And in target application, we can see we have only web platform is selected. So I click on this plus icon. Then I add a service name my web services app. Then I click OK. And then I go back to my resources. And here I click on the API models. So here we have an introduction. What are API models used for? How to create an API model? How to use API model in execution? So you can read a uh, about the API and its uses through this short intro. Right now we are clicking next. And after clicking next, you can see API type. If I select the drop down, I can see JSON templates. As you know, API structure can be formed using JavaScript object notation. So you can use JSON templates, Swagger, Document, Wisdom, XML templates. So we are going to select Wisdom. If you have a source file, you can select that also. Otherwise, if you have a URL, you can use a URL also. So I have a URL. I'm going to paste that URL here. And about the wisdom, you can search on Google about Google wisdom or any kind of wisdom that you have. And now I click on load. So you can see the file loaded successfully. I click OK. And after clicking OK, we are going to click next. So after clicking on next, we can see here selected name, do get paid. So we have three APIs and for these three APIs, the description is not missing for this uh, visitor. So no worries. And uh, from here, we get an idea what are the APIs and what these APIs will do. Now here you can see a compare API button. So if I click on this compare API, it will show us some like uh, something like this in which you can see matching api model and comparison status so this plus sign indicates that uh, you have these apis over a new api it means that uh, these apis are totally new and no other apis was used in this uh, solution structure so i click on next and then this is showing us api model and some sample request then i click next and then we can finish it. So after finishing, you can see under the API model, you have three APIs added, and uh, you can see its configurations, model parameters, output values, and output value template. In configuration, if I go down, you can see the SOAP action, network credential, default, or custom, and request handlers. Even you can see a request body here. So if I click on request body, you can see XML format, free text, 
and from file so here if we can change any part we can do that as well and similarly if i go on this api i can see request header body model parameters and uh, api type and point url top action and everything so if i go to this first one and in the first one if i make any changes in the body content let's suppose we kept as 55 or 5512 and body name is like mlogs basically we are giving it a manipulation and then we are saving it now it is saved now if i do a plus here again then i click next i am adding the same url as this then i am clicking load the file loaded successfully then i click next now i compare the api so see you can see a warning sign here now this warning sign indicates that this api is already existing and there is a some modification because the existing and this new one which we are trying to add is not matching so here you can see some suggestion is coming the suggestion is replace existing merge changes add new do not add new so you can select which you want so right now i have shown you that i have created some changes in the body so i want merge changes so in merge changes you can see the existing api model and new api model so if i do if I do a request body expansion from the existing, you can see I have added header as 5512 and uh, body as mlox. Sorry, it is a mlox for and then mlox. So I cannot change it here, so no worries. And if I go to the new API model and I expand its request body, I can see here it is not present. So basically we have our decision like whether we want to take existing API or take new API. So let's suppose we want to add a new API. So I can click on this take new API. Then here you can see that API structure and the request body as well. So in the request body you can see everything is fine now. And we can click OK. So after clicking OK the budget changes is done. Now I click next and are you sure you want to yes. Now click next and then click on finish. So now our API again is set it here and if I expand this requested body I can see those 5512 and mdocs is replaced from here. So this is how we can add API models and we can automate our testing of API using, using this tool. I hope this session was helpful. Thanks.